I've been lied to, bust out, passed over and cussed out. Now I'm up nights, struggling to keep it in the uprights. No touchdown, I've been, been high, but I cut down. Had to calm down, trying to stay sane. Hey guys, this is Hunter from Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm coming at you live from Gen Con. This is episode 57. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to hear this okay. I've kind of found a corner that doesn't appear to be too packed. <laughs> um, and it, it's actually pretty quiet in, in this little area here. I've got the laptop with me. I'm kind of testing out a, a portable recording thing. So hopefully if this goes well, we can be able to do this maybe more in the future. But I'm going to try to do the this week's episode here from Gen Con. It's of course going to be a short one since I'm going to be doing it like this. I'm just It's just me here. Um, Drew had to work and Austin is demoing a game right now. Actually, I haven't seen him all day long. Um, I wasn't even planning on getting to go to Gen Con today, but my work schedule happened to work out where I was able to go for um, at least till 5 o'clock. So... I got to get in some games, got to get my con exclusives. I wanted to give you guys, you know, the the info on how that went on uh, this year's Gen Con so far compared to last, and then very quickly go over. I've got my notes for news and community, and then uh, once I get home, I'll you know throw an intro song on this episode and try to make it sound nice and everything. But for now, um, just. Hopefully you guys can hear me well, and hopefully uh, this whole thing goes smooth. But I think it, I think it will. So let's start off with purchasing con exclusives. Um, this is something that we have talked about in the past. Last year was a huge mess. It was, it was about the worst you could possibly handle um, doing the line to purchase con exclusives. Um, this year, I actually got a exhibitor badge um, and tried to purchase my cons early before the main doors open to the public. Um, for those of you who are exhibitors and will be or volunteers, and you need to purchase your con exclusives from WizKids before the doors open to everyone else so that you can get back to your booth to work your booth, um, you're shit out of luck because they refused to sell us, any of us, uh, with exhibitor badges, anything ahead of time. So sadly, if you if that's the boat you're in, if you are an exhibitor and you need to purchase things before you're, you need to be back to your store before the doors open, you're screwed if you need anything from WizKids. So that kind of sucked, and that was pretty disappointing. Aside from that... Um, they did a much better job of of doing the line. They basically only let it go around once. Uh, they cut it off pretty early, and that way we weren't clogging up the entire alleyways of the rest of Gen Con there right when the doors opened. And uh, everything went pretty smooth. You had to have cash only. They had a they had a like a a thing setting up set up to form the line. They had people ready as you go through the line to hand you whichever things you would like to purchase and I gotta say it went much smoother I was I was much happier and more impressed with the way that things went this year so aside from not letting the exhibitors purchase things ahead of time um, it went pretty nice I still had to wait you know almost an hour about 50 minutes before I could get my um, cons just because of the mass rush of people flooding the doors as soon as the doors open so Hopefully you exhibitor guys won't have as much of a, a problem as I did, but went much smoother. So we have to applaud WizKids on getting the con exclusive line, you know, done much much more efficiently. Um, I have not done any side tournaments yet. I know that they are. I, I just found this out recently. Otherwise, I would have tried to compete in it because it does sound interesting. But they did a team sealed event set up this year where you can have two people... Actually, I think there's sealed and constructed events both. Uh, but in the team sealed, I think if I think the finalists can actually qualify for the last day of Worlds, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, basically, you can each get so many boosters, build a team, work together, kind of two-headed giant style. If you've ever played two-headed giant in Magic, you can do it like that. Um, that sounds really cool, and, and the people that I 
local friends that I talked to that did it said they had a blast. So that's something I'm looking forward to trying in the future. If they do that at a con near you, maybe at at uh, Origins or Dragon Con or anything like that, or Gen Con next year coming up, I would suggest trying it because I've talked to about five or six people now who tried it, and every one of them had excellent things to say. They really thought it was a fun style of event. Um, I haven't got to do any side tournaments. Honestly, I'm just I'm not in the mood to play clicks. To be totally honest, I've I haven't been for a, a, a couple of days. So you can you kind of go through. I don't know about you guys, but I know we do. You know, and, and a lot of our friends we talk to that we play clicks two or three times a week. And there's some points where you're like on fire and you fit and you really want to play clicks and you feel like you're focused in. And then every now and then you'll have a week or two where you just absolutely do not want to play clicks. And unfortunately for me, that time is like right now and I'm just not in the mood to play clicks. I think it's also mainly seeing all these other games that I want to test and demo and that I've never played before. Um, I'm kind of wanting to do that. Last year, we did nothing but play Battle Royals and tournaments for four straight days, and it was exhausting. And honestly, it wasn't even fun. We kind of ran ourselves into the ground. So this year, I kind of want to just keep it loose, try a bunch of different games. And uh, so, so far, I have not done any side tournaments. In fact, I was only supposed to do two tomorrow, and I don't think I think I'm going to back out of my second one just because I, even though I think not many people will show up, and I would pretty much certainly get a con exclusive. I'd probably only have to go like two and one. Uh, but I I don't think I'm going to have time. I think we're all going out for to watch the Colts preseason game, go to a bar and everything. And I think I'd just rather do that and kind of hang out with friends this year. So I am going to go to one side tournament tomorrow. So I'll be able to give you guys feedback on how they run those this year. Um, I did get to do one Battle Royal today. And... This will blow, I think this will blow all of your minds if you're not at Gen Con. They used Guardians of the Galaxy boosters for Battle Royals. I would have bet you, any of you listeners out there, $1,000 to $1. I would have given you 1,000 to 1 odds that they would not use Guardians of the Galaxy boosters for Battle Royals. I mean, just go, but, it, you know, nothing makes sense with them. You never know what the hell's going to happen. Um... Because, you know, two years ago, people threw a fit because they used Hulk and Superman boosters, which had been out for, like, six months prior to Gen Con. That's what they used for Battle Royals that year. Last year, they used um, uh, Teen Titans and Amazing Spider-Man, which had each been out for at least four, I want to say almost six months, but I have to, I can't check. You know, obviously, like I said, I'm not in front of my main computer. I'm on site here, but... I, I think I think they had been out for about six months prior to... Or I know Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man had been out for six months. Teen Titans had been out for like two or three... I think three months. So, so naturally, what would be the guess of what sets they would have? Well, I would, I would have guessed definitely uh, Superman Legion of Superheroes. And that is, in fact, what they have for DC. But I would have said that they would have Iron Man here for the Battle Royals or or possibly Deadpool. And sure enough, they actually brought Guardians of the Galaxy out. So I was like, well, hell, Guardians of the Galaxy, I'll do that. Um, they did the random pairings this year. You have They wait till 16 people are ready to start a Royal, and then they randomly pair you up. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. Just because I, I want to go there and play with my friends and not random people, that's just my preference. It's not a huge, huge deal. Um, I got paired up with four people. Didn't have any really, you know, people who made it an unfun event for me, so I can't complain too much. But it just kind of sucks having so much more fun with my friends doing it the uh, over the years that way compared to doing it this way with just random people that you don't know. Um, it is a big difference. It, I, you know, whatever. It's not. I. Th- it's not going to change back. They're not going to change it back. So there's really no use in in bitching about it too much. Um, they gave out ATAs to all players. There are several new ATAs. If you guys have not seen them, I will try to copy them in the podcast description when I post this and get all my editing done. Um, there are several new ATAs. I got the Brotherhood of Mutants one. There's several new X Men ones and everything. So if you guys haven't checked those out, be sure to check them out. There's lots of really cool ones, mainly for the Wolverine and the 
X Men set and for Superman Legion of Superheroes, um, kind of those keywords that we saw in those sets. Everybody got an ATA, um, and then first place got the con exclusive, and then you drafted it from there. But we played Guardians of the Galaxy. I kind of got shafted because uh, my boosters were all, by the time the boosters got past me, I had all low point pieces to choose from. Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of weird. You would think, being that it's a cosmic set, it would have a lot of big points pieces, but it actually doesn't. It, it has so many generics at the common and uncommon slot that. I ended up with like a 200, I think I counted up a 250 point team was my force. Um, the guy next to me had Beyonder, who can go up to 500, but they they maxed him out for these at 300. They said you can't play him more than 300. So I counted his force to be up uh, around 600 points. Uh, the player that ended up winning had the super rare Iron Man at 200 points. He's about the best battle royal piece you can get. Uh, just because you'll he'll just run out, one-shot someone, and then go hide in the corner afterwards with his special um, hypersonic speed. Uh, his force was like almost right under 600 points. It was like 500 and something. And then my other opponent had a like a right un, under 500. So I was almost double. I was almost half of the build total of the rest of my opponents. So I ended up coming in last place on the last action. But luckily we pulled three super rare, so all of us at least got a super rare. Um, it was a pretty good time. I like the way that they're doing royals this year. Royals are much more smooth. I got. I have to say that um, they instead of doing the really long line and everybody waiting to get paired up and all that stuff, um, they basically have a booth set up and you just walk up and sign up a sheet and either Marvel or DC. And as soon that sheet has sixteen slots, and as soon as that sheet fills up. They come up. You go ahead and sit down, and you're ready, and you're waiting. And then as soon as that sheet fills up, they bring the boosters over, and then they do your pairings and everything. It went much more smoother. So I have to give it to WizKids again on that. They have uh, really got the Royals down efficiently. Um, we went to the spaghetti dinner, Austin and I, last night, Thursday night. Met some fans. It was really nice to meet you guys. I, I. I can't remember people's names off the top of my head, but it was really cool to kind of get, um, you know, for you guys to say hey and, and to know that we do have some fans out there. Um, sold a couple shirts. I still have several shirts left. We'll see um, how many I sell between now and Gen Con. It looks like I'm probably going to be left with some 2X and 3X. So if I have a lot left over, then we probably will sell them online. I just don't know how much the shipping will be, but. Stay tuned for that, those of you who live far away but want to get a shirt. There may be hope for you that we'll have some left in at least in 2X and 3X. Uh, the spaghetti dinner was really cool. For any of you guys who went to Gen Con who didn't go to the spaghetti dinner, I actually would suggest going. It was a really good time. It's ran by Jameson, uh, Gaucho King on the forums. He's played at our venue once or twice, uh, a couple times back in Fear Itself, and he was a really nice guy. Um, he runs it. He, he he sets the whole thing up. He's a, he does an excellent job. They have several people. They have uh, they had three or four guys there from WizKids um, answering questions, giving out prizes. They had two or three guys there from HC Realms and TCG Player, uh, or no, sorry, from TCG Player. And then uh, Typhoon from HC Realms was there. Howard from the ROC was there, and uh, they kind of. You know, said their little spiel and uh, just kind of gave encouragement and feedback on what's coming up for them. Um, they opened up the floor to questions to WizKids. Of course, they said, you know, we won't be, we're not allowed to answer anything that's not announced. So really, I could, we couldn't get any big information for you. Um, let me think of some questions. I'll think of some big ones off the top of my head right now, but then I'll get together with Austin and we'll try to write down the questions that were asked and get you guys the answers. Um, one person, one good question was uh, the thing that I complain about all the time of why they put spells and traps for Yu-Gi-Oh to only be able to be used with the Yu-Gi-Oh scenario rules, even though they're on the cards and obviously meant to be intended to be played with, you know, the <laughs> the figures and not only in the Yu-Gi-Oh scenario. They basically said that's something that will be open and that kind of happens with 
um, each set. Basically what I said that happened with Epic Actions, the same thing. Like, eventually, I honestly would expect them to change that. But for now, that it's going to stay like that. Um, people were asking about entities, of course. They were asking, you know, um, is there any chance they're going to get changed to be not played with resources? Or what I personally think they should be stipulated to is that they should be considered tactics um, so that you can still play with resources, you can still do all that, but in a format that is quote-unquote no tactics, they wouldn't be allowed because they're that much of a huge advantage. Um, This is a question that we'll bring up again next week when Austin's here because Austin and I had a little discussion about this and I'd like to open it up more and kind of get into it deeper like Austin and I did when we were talking about it. But the the guy basically said from WizKids that that is a design choice and that we shouldn't focus too much on the current what's going on and how they're dominating and um, kind of basically saying that's a design choice. You may see things in the future that interact with it or just basically don't be too hasty. Um So that would make you think, obviously, the first thing that would come to your mind is, well, either he's saying there's going to be a silver bullet to them um, or that there will be several more. Um, Austin was saying like maybe they would do a similar thing in the Trinity War or something like that where there would be more possessor-type people. Um, Personally, I think... I think, for one, that's a cop-out. It's kind of a cop-out answer, honestly. Uh, it's it, it's basically, like, not admitting any wrong. I The thing is, he brings up a good point, a point that I try to bring up a lot when people start bitching about things currently in the meta, is that he is right at, at any time, no matter what it is, whether it's entities or whatever. I mean, we've seen things way worse than entities when they first come out, but... You can't look at the now. There's always something coming down the pipe that will help uh, fix that. The problem is, it seems over the past few years, and we talked with Edward about this too, and he's kind of brought up the same thing himself several times over the years. They kind of are ramping out of control. It's not even a. It's not even a power creep anymore. It's. It, I said it's almost like just a straight slope like it's almost just a, a power run up a up a hill of power of they they're trying to fix things with bigger things and that's never the answer it's almost you know a rotation system like what WizKids has and like what magic has is a great thing for the metagame and i almost think they would be better off waiting things out and stop trying to fix their screw-ups because I feel like they keep trying to fix their problems and and making bigger problems. I almost think it would be better to to ride it out and kind of start fresh. That's just my thoughts. But we'll get into that more whenever Austin's here and uh, we can go back over the questions and everything. But anyways, as a whole, it was a good time. We met some people, um, but I, I highly suggest you guys that can attend the spaghetti dinner next year hosted by hc realms go it was a great time and we appreciate those guys having us out there um news wise notes just you know gardens of the galaxy released this week it looks like a promising set um of course you have the zombie chases if you're interested in those there are several really good super rares those personally what i'm more interested in um, they all seem fun to play. Everybody that I talked to that did Royals really likes the set so far. There are several generics, and it's just a really good overall set. Um, I have a note here about a new era- new erratas. Um, if you go to HeroClicks.com and you go to HeroClicks Rules Announcement, New Hero Clicks Rules Forum and Erratic Clarifications. You'll notice that they've made a couple erratas here kind of quietly. Actually, these kind of snuck by. Most people I talked to didn't even realize these happened. But you'll see some erratas there for countdown clicks, kind of like Loki and stuff like that. Um, erratas for 
the yeah erratus for loki specifically for the sniper rifle construct uh for entities very small little uh wording com- uh clarification uh black talon can't target characters that are on the map or on characters cards they clarified that because people were thinking about trying to target entities that are possessing your figure and then putting that entity out basically on full points which is a really smart idea don't get me wrong but they've already they shot that down real quick and the same with batmite people were trying to choose use batmite and then choose entities as the hero, and then popping them out onto the map and all that good stuff. So that's all been clarified. If you guys want to take a look through that, especially those of you who are judges, uh, like I said, go to HeroClicks.com and then go to the uh, where it says HeroClicks Rules Announcement, New Errata Clarifications, August 2014. Other than that, there's not much news aside from the ATAs. Like I said, I don't have them all in front of me, but I will when I get home, I'll try to link everything for you so you can check those out but i'm sure most of you guys have already seen them by now community let me check our email account and see if we had any questions i know we did but i think most of them i had looked at and said hey i'm gonna wait till we have everybody here before we answer that um i do have one that i'll answer today from eric linnell uh he says hey hunter i figured i'd send you a few questions for your short show if you have the time Number one, do you like con exclusives? That's a good question. Um, If you're talking about purchasable con exclusives, I do like them just because it does help everyone in the situation. Um, It helps the con itself. It helps bring in more attendees to the con. So in this case, Gen Con. Um, It gives an incentive for players to show up and focus on that specific game so it helps whiz kids as well it brings more attention to whiz kids it people see the a lot of people will walk by while you're standing in line and like they see you like rushing trying to get in line and they're like what the hell are these nerds doing and then they'll always ask like what are you guys you know doing and never and then you'll say oh we're in line to get con exclusives for whiz kids and then for hero clicks and then they'll ask about it and then they'll learn about hero clicks i've honestly witnessed that multiple times even today a couple just you know just a couple times so it benefits, and then it benefits you, you know, for attending the con. It gives you a little extra motivation. Um, and then if the past is to be believed, they will later release them. You know, it's not like you'll never, ever get a chance to get your hands on these figures. More than likely, they'll put them on their eBay store in the future. You'll have more chances at getting these figures. So as far as the purchasable ones, I do like them. I do think it's a good idea. And pretty much every single game. Every big game uh, does con exclusives. As far as con exclusives as the prizes for like uh, the events and everything and for worlds and everything, um, yes and no. It I don't really know what the answer is aside from maybe doing like factory sets for everything and, and shortening the number of prizes. Um, I kind of don't mind the figure-based convention exclusives, like, for example, this year, the Hulk, She-Hulk, and Amazo, and all stuff, um, because they usually do a good job about choosing characters that have a lot of clicks versions already, or are super crazy obscure. Then again, you don't really want them to do a super obscure character. You don't want them to do someone who's never been clicked or hasn't been clicked in 10 years because there are, are several people who want that clicks and want it to be readily available. Um, for example, Amazo himself would be a good example. Jonah Hex and, for me, um, Dupe. Dupe and Jonah Hex and Amazo. You know, those personally, those kind of characters, I would rather them do in a main set and then for this type of con exclusive thing do a special do the vampire batman and the vampire wolverine and that you know or something like that characters that we already get enough iterations of that's just my personal preference it's not a big deal either way um as far as the items for the resources and stuff that i don't like just because 
it's such a huge advantage competitively. It's the same bitch I have with making the chases from Superman Legion of Superheroes and then now War of the Light. So incredibly good. When you create those chases from War of the Light, if you're a designer and you create that possession ability, I'm we're assuming that if you are a game designer for Heroclix, you know at least a little bit about the state that Heroclix is in. So you know when you release those how powerful I gotta assume you play test at least a little bit. So you know how powerful that is, that mechanic is of 25 points possessions when you create it. So to put it at a chase slot to me is really shady and it's kind of pushing people away from the game. Not that many, but a vocal minority. You know, I, I do personally know people and then other people I talk to online that just are really getting sick of the chases being so strong competitive wise. I mean, you look, all the chases for War of the Light are over $100. I mean, that's ridiculous. We're starting to reach, you know, levels of ridiculousness that Magic and other games see that 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 is the exact thing that shies a lot of people away from those games. Me personally, I mean, it's so expensive to get a competitive Magic deck these days. We, you know, me and the friends I talked to would never get back into Magic just because of how expensive it is. And and the good thing about clicks is you can always suggest to somebody when they ask about getting into it, you can say, you can say confidently, you can build a very competitive uh, team for under, you know, 20 bucks or whatever. I can't say that anymore, you know. I, I can't say that whenever, if I want to play the Bat Belt competitively, I need night vision goggles and first aid kits. Um, I can't say that whenever it's a no tactics event in all the ROCs for six months, and yet entities are not considered tactics. So I'm going to have to have at least a $100 piece, at least one entity on my team to even freaking compete. I can't say, I can't suggest that to new players anymore or to new ish players. When they ask me about that, and that's a sad thing for the state, for the game as a whole. Um, so I kind of don't like the, you know, I, I kind of got off on a tangent there, but I kind of don't like that aspect of the con exclusives, the object, the resource special ones. Uh, number two, does Whiz Kids, uh, uh, unless, sorry, before I move on to the next one, unless you make them very readily available very soon after Gen Con, like within a few months, period. Like, within, like, three or four months, have them purchasable in stores, you know, essentially, for reasonable prices. Uh, number two, does WizKids need a new method for distributing resource add-ons? I'm not sure what you're getting at with that. If you're talking about the Lantern Packs and how they did that. Or if you're talking about what I was just talking about, the con exclusives, you know, resource add-ons, that I'm not, I, I'm not really sure how to answer that question for number two. Number three, if you won worlds, what figure would would you design? Um, you know, honestly, luckily for me, I, and actually it's funny because I found a list. I wish I had it with me. I'll actually bring it. I'll try to find it for next week. I found a list the other day that I had made like two years ago when we first started playing clicks or almost three years ago, um, of like my top 10 figures that I wanted to create, like if I could create one. And now that I look back at it, a lot of them have been made in the last year even. Um, Phantom X, off the top of my head, Phantom X, Jonah Hex, they just made. Um, those two were on there. I know Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man, was on there. He got made an Amazing Spider-Man. Um, Hellboy's still my number one. So he would be the answer to your question. I would make a new Hellboy if they would let me, but I don't think they would let me because I think they, you know, have a rights issue with all that stuff. So the rest of the questions I'll save for next week. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to remind you guys, we have an ROC coming up here in Indianapolis at the dugout. It's the first annual Dial H for Hero Clicks qualifier. It is a qualifier level, not a super Q, but uh, it is only $10 entry fee, and that is the cheapest. I 
you know that that's the cheapest qualifier level event you're going to find um and i'm only doing that because we myself and my store owner aren't worried about making money off of you guys we just want lots of people to come and have a good time pretty much all the prizes i'm donating for myself out of pocket um the payouts will be you know the standard rock prizes <clears throat> and then the first place will get uh a set of my custom action tokens. I made a few batches of different popular superheroes. You'll get first pick out of those. You'll get a um, chase figure of your choice. I have like 20 chases, like around 20 to $30, you know, value figures. You can choose, have your first pick out of those. You can, you'll also get a couple like War of Light boosters. So you'll definitely, and then you'll get all the other ROC stuff too. And then the points and everything. Uh, other than that, most of the prizes I'm doing are actually door prizes that every person will be eligible for. So every person who enters is eligible for several prizes. We, I have a Colossal Cyclops that I, I'm giving away, my own personal one. I'm giving away like three more sets of, of our custom poker chips. Um, I, think I, have, I think I had a set of dice too. Um, several LEs, a lot of the War of the Light LEs, like the Atrocitus's and the Larflees and the, the monthly ones. Um, and then some, some team bases and stuff. And then we're also dropping prices on all our click stuff big time. So uh, we have concession stands available. It should be a really good time. So anybody who's in the within rel, you know reasonable driving distance of Indianapolis, come down. It's a small venue, but... It should be a lot of fun. Um, I am going to max it out at 64 players. Um, I, I'm just shooting. It, as long as we can get 20, I can make my money back on this at only $10 a person. And the good thing is also, I, I like I said, we're not trying to make money. So after the first 20 people, I have, I have officially made my money back that I paid for the prize kit. After that, each person who puts who comes in and pays the ten dollar entry, all of that money is going to prizes. It's going right into buying more boosters for prizes. So, you know, the more people that come, the more prizes that I have access to giving out to you guys. And there will be tons and tons of door prizes. So, everybody will have a good chance at getting something and getting their monies back. You know, so if you can, October eighteenth uh, from. Looking at it, I have it listed as 1 p.m. I'm looking at moving it up to 12 just because I think we're going to have more people than I actually suspected we would have. So October 18th from, let's say, noon to 7 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. You can find it on the HeroClix uh, event system and go ahead and pre-register. I suggest registering if you plan on attending for sure. That way I can kind of get a head count and know how many people to expect. But that's, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now. I'm sorry that it's short, and I, I hope you guys can hear me well. I haven't, not very many people have walked by, so I've gotten lucky that it's been pretty quiet here. And we'll be back next week with the whole crew. We'll do a full wrap-up on, uh, on Gen Con. We'll talk about the actual competitive teams, how they did. We'll talk about the top 16, kind of what that shows us and, and our, our thoughts, and kind of do a full Gen Con wrap-up next week. Until then, this is Hunter for Dial at Your Hero Click signing off. I'm attacking the winning, dig it, dig it.